Welcome back, thanks for tuning in. This is now part two for this build, and one of the first things I need to do is correct one of the mistakes I made in part one, and that's these screws here on this facing. This facing is going to be right up against the frame of the table saw, and I can't have the screws sticking out like that, so I am going to replace some of these so I can countersink them and have everything nice and flush, and I keep this as tight as possible to the frame, because I don't want any gaps, and, and I also it, you know, look a lot nicer this way. So next, it's quite simple. I want to uh, glue and screw this in place. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do a little bit differently, though, is I'm going to take some of those screws that I just removed, and I'm going to use them here. So what I'm going to do is mark out all the holes, and then I'm going to just run the drill bit through here. This is the same size as the one I would use uh, with a, the standard countersink on it. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the depth stop on the mill, and I'm going to use a Forstner bit, and I'm going to make a nice flat bottom holes, and I'm going to use those screws with the nice flat uh, head to them. That way uh, I'll be able to put a lot of force on this and keep this nice and tight on the box, and uh, I don't have to worry as much about voids this way and having screws go too far in or get stripped and that sort of stuff. So the other thing is, I'm not entirely sure yet how I'm going to finish this, whether I'm just going to leave the screws as they are or cap them with a dowel or a filler or whatever. But this will uh, leave all the options open. And one thing nice about this is, as you see me doing these, I initially put the, the Forstner bit, hole, the, the tip, the little tip down there, and it just wiggles the board nice and loosely into place, and then I hold it down tightly and you should be able to see it here. I know I do have a clip coming up where it's a bit more clear. Yeah, you can't quite see it there. But the next uh, clip is, shows it quite easily, and I find that it was just an easy way of making sure they got centered properly because a lot of these, it's really difficult to, uh, well, mark out where everything's going to be and have it fit on the mill here. So there you go. It just wiggles just a little bit, and then I hold it in place and uh, finish the rest of it. And that's it. It uh, comes with a nice clean hole. And then this is just... Again, the really easy part, which is just take these panels off and spread some glue on here and then just screw them all into place. So this torsion box has turned out really quite well, even though, as I said in the part one, and like I said, don't do things when you're going on holidays. I made a few mistakes on it. You can see one of the holes uh, right there where my hand was a few seconds ago. Uh, that was one of them, and if I remember telling you, uh, I also messed up a little bit on one of the dimensions. But after, you know, just a little bit of cutting and rearranging some of the screws, uh, it's all going to turn out really quite nicely because it's very, very square, uh, very flat, which is the most important part, of course. And this should be more than solid enough for, uh, well, its intended purpose. So, very happy with it in the end. And, of course, all those mistakes are under here, and, you know, I don't have to look at them, which just sounds like really kind of nice. This is a simple matter now of making sure everything is relatively positioned, it's not critical. Uh, there's a lot of give on this, but I am going to try and center it reasonably well because I have that center piece, uh, the center um, piece of plywood, uh, and I can use that as an eyeball to get it relatively straight. And then it's just, like I said, a simple matter of putting one screw in on one side, uh, tightening it up a little bit on the other side, putting the other screw in. You'll see it here in a second again. And then there, yeah, just finishing up all the holes. And this is the top of this done, which is nice. This is, like I said, nice and straightforward so far. The hard part is going to be what's coming next, because I need to build a framework that this is going to be attached to uh, the saw with that is going to end up this being as close to, uh, well, as close as I can with a slight bit of excess and uh, flush with the top of the saw. Because I don't want this to be underneath. I don't want it to stick up too much. Uh, there's only so much um, sanding that I can do to flatten this out. Um, I want it to be like as close as possible. So I took some serious measurements here for this. And I really took my time. Made sure I got as accurate as I could. And then, as I did in part one, I added a little bit to it. Uh, what I can do is, as I test this out and take the pieces and hold them up and adjust things as needed, I can always shave a tiny amount off, and that's hopefully what I'll remember to do, as I forgot to do in uh, part one. So I'm going to cut these pieces and get them all set up where I need them to be, uh, making sure that I am allowing for all the different sizes and, of course, thicknesses of everything, 
and uh, then I'm gonna align them. I'm gonna put them in place and make sure that it's doing exactly what I want it to. And as you can see here again, I'm using as many offcuts as possible and actually really going through a lot of my little bits and pieces of three quarter inch. So these are going to be the foot pads. Uh, I'm going to make two um, open face boxes for the lift for this and these are going to be the tops and bottoms for that. Now they're all going to get screwed onto a long piece that's going to go the full length and then of course the uh, torsion box and top of this is going to uh, fit on top of that. So there's a top and bottom and it's going to stick them there and then I'm going to take the two uprights, uh, there's actually four of these and it's going to line them up here, put them roughly in place, make sure like I said that things fit the way I want them to and then I'm going to just take a piece of three quarter inch that's the same piece that I cut off the other one I know it's getting a little too anal here but this is the same, this is an off cut off the piece that's the top for uh, this extension and I'm going to, like I said, put it right here, uh, rub my fingers along it, make sure there is that little bit of extra. And I'm going to go along here and I'm going to shift it to the other end as well. And just double and triple check everything out here. I know it seems like an awful lot of a pain at this point, but it is going to save me an awful lot of work uh, going forward if I can get really, really close to uh, the height that I want for this and then leave just ever so small an amount. Uh, just to sand off to make it uh, truly flush. So hopefully it'll all work out. So there you go. That's uh, as much of that as I'm going to show you. I did a fair amount of it, and now it's going to make uh, one of the uprights for this, and we're going to get it all screwed into place and uh, get an uh, initial setup for this. One of the things I don't get to today in this video is the final bracket, which is going to first off support the far end of the table saw extension and then also bring it up to level so that it is true with the entire length of the top of the saw. That's going to be for part three. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, is just going to use a corner clamp and lock these into place and build, well, I'm going to show you one of the two uprights for this. This is going to supply a great deal of support for uh, the near end of this extension. So, that, well, first off, I'll be able to uh, put a fair amount of weight on this, but most importantly is I don't want this to shift at all once this is uh, finalized. Once I have it where I want it to be, I want it to uh, be able to be used and not to move. So I am obviously putting a lot more uh, security onto this than uh, is really necessary, but again, like I said, I don't want to end up having to adjust this later on. So hopefully that's the way it'll end up turning out. So this is, like I say, almost done now, and this is one of the two uprights. And I won't bother showing you the other one, of course, because it's just a rinse and repeat of this. And now it's a simple matter of double checking, just to make sure that I got everything right, and making sure that this is all still exactly where I want it to once it is uh, put in place. Because having these blocks just sit there, and then putting stuff on top of them and seeing if everything's all right. It's not the same as screwing them tightly into place like this and then uh, setting them up where they need to be. So this is how it's going to sit. Uh, they're going to sit on this piece here and I'm going to screw that into place, of course. And they're going to be screwed into each other as well. And this is not <laughs> the piece of wood that I used as the offcut before, but I just double checked to make sure it was the same because this one's longer. And there you go, this is all nice and square and true now, so it's a matter of setting this in place. And as you can see, they fit into the slots uh, inside the torsion box. And I have already screwed them onto the platform on the bottom, you're going to see that in a second here. And now it's a simple matter again, of putting them into place and making brackets for that so I can attach it. So, I've clamped everything into place now, and as you can see, it is really, really close. It is very, very close. I was actually a little concerned at this point for it being under, but as it turns out, it's perfectly fine. And this is what I mean for the final extension bracket. It needs to do that, which is just left, lift that up into place, and it's going to be under here and attached onto that. So that's for, like I said, part three. So there we go. Uh, again, just clamped into place, giving you a different view of this. And I'm going to rub my finger on here, and again, there's just ever so slightly an edge to this. You can't really see it here, really, but you can see my finger catches a little bit. 
And that's what I want. That's uh, pretty much perfect, because again, there's still some more screwing and clamping that's going to happen here, and I want to make sure, again, that it's above, not below. So here i got a clamp on place uh, to hold it where I want it to, because I need to build two clamps that are going to fit on here and hold this all into place. So here you go. It's basically just two blocks of wood uh, drilled through, and I have washers on either end, and uh, just going to lock that all into place and then tighten the screws in. One of them I had to remove and replace as you can see there because I put it in the wrong spot but other than that it all went together really quite well. It's uh, coming together nicely and there it is free hold and ready for the final stages and I'm going to show you the underneath bit here and uh, you can see where the clamps are and that's pretty much it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Definitely leave me comments and let me know what you think of this. I'm going to give it a wiggle here to show you how solid it is. And this is not obviously with all the stuff on it yet, but it's close. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.